Hello everyone, this is Fine from Tech Gaming Villa. Today I'm going to talk about the 2TB, the Sony Bravi X80K and the Sony Bravi X85K. You see the 2TB, the right side is Sony Bravi X80K and the left side is Sony Bravi X85K. The high-end Bravia TVs have always looked sleek and modern, something out of science fiction movie with their sharp edges and all black frames. On the Bravia X80K 65 inch, you were greeted with a frameless design that is more popularized these days by rival brands. The bezels are fairly slim too for a LED TV and the bottom jean has the traditional Sony light bar status light. The rear has a solid construction too with easy access to the input output uh, ports even on the wall mount. The collection of ports includes the HDMI ports, uh, an Ethernet port, a digital audio output and a couple of USB-C ports and some more. You also get a modern remote controller with all absolutely necessary buttons required to uh, run a smart TV but misses out on channel keys and other buttons have seen on older TV remotes. Sadly, this is an IR remote which means you have to point it at the TV every time you want to change something. This is what the Bravia X80K 65 inch rules for a LED backlit TV, a pricey LED TV with regards to the viewing experience, especially since the Xiaomi OLED Vision TV sits in the other room. A couple of minutes with the TV and I was impressed. This is a 4K 60Hz panel with uh, support for Dolby Vision, HDR10 and HLG formats. Being a 65 inch panel, I was surprised to see the impressive upscaling quality as well as all the color management and processing. That is largely due to the X1 processor that Sony uses in the Bravi X80K 65 inch paired with the 4K X Reality Pro and Preluminous Pro. The TV is able to come close and even match at times the contrast and punchiness of the QLED TVs at times. In standard definition content, the upscale performance is great and the TV maintains great color vibrancy. The direct LED backlighting keeps light lit under control, but the local dimming performance could have been better. The light halo effect is visible in darker regions, and since there is an LCD panel behind, blacks more appear grey. The overall picture quality is good in the standard mode, and you can enhance it further with the various picture modes. While watching HD10 and Dolby Vision content, the panel performed as per expectations. For example, in Marvel Loki and on Disney Plus Hotstar, the picture mode defaults to Dolby Vision Bright and you can choose the slightly dimmer Dolby Vision Dark mode. Whichever mode you pick, the picture quality and color reproducing is top notch. No complaints here, the same was the case with HD10 content on Amazon Prime, which has looked as good as expected. While the panel defaults to a refresh rate of 60 Hz, there's a motion smoothening that makes the content look smoother. In fact, the motion smoothening and watching F1 races or cricket matches was a delight. Due to the absence of a Sony, PlayStation 5 or any other gaming console, I could not test the gaming performance of this TV. The presence of an auto brightness sensor helps keep it comfortable for the eyes. In short, this may be an LED TV, but the picture processing and upscaling can make up mostly for drawbacks of the LED panel. Yes, in dark scenes, the blacks are not true blacks. You can witness the irregular black uniformity and grays. This is where the QLED and OLED TVs gain a big advantage. While the beam experience has been great, the same cannot be said for the sound for such a large TV. I was disappointed to see 210 watt speakers tasked with the sound requirements. The speakers are assisted by bass reflectors which promise some low-end grunt. In reality, the audio performance of the Sony Bravi X80K 65 inch is decent by all means. The sound stage is narrow but there's some emphasis on low and low end. Due to the lack of a subwoofer, you miss out on the rich low end. For regular TV watching and web shows, bringing the speaker system will do just fine. However, you will need a dedicated soundbar system for the movies. But the TV also features an acoustic auto calibration that can tune the audio output based on the room's layout. On the other hand, if you see the X85K, X85K is a direct LED BA panel, but it is a better TV if I compare it to uh, X80K. It is brighter than X80K and its contrast is deeper than X80K. From a specifications perspective, nothing has changed from last year as the same technology seems to be used. One of these technologies is what Sony calls a preluminous display, which is a technology that the TV uses in order to display a wider color palette and more natural shapes and views. 
The X85 is using the Luminous Pro display to be exact. As for the numbers, I measured the 94% coverage in the DCI-P3 color space, which is really good. While on the more white Recon 2020 color space, I got a coverage of 70%, which is in the line with the category of this model. Overall, the X85K seems to perform slightly better than the 2021 X85J, but the difference is too small to be seen with neck ties, so don't expect anything major here. Before calibration, the X85 had amazing color accuracy with only a few white balance problems while all colors had values below the delta E limit of 3. Both of them could be further improved with calibration, but even without any uh, I'm really surprised by how good it looked right out of the box. Other gradients were very good, although I did notice some slight bending with some green shades, but nothing noteworthy to talk about. There's also two noise reduction functions or random noise reduction and digital noise reduction that you can use, but keep in mind that you are going to lose some fine detail if enabled, so use them wisely. It seems that nothing major has changed in the x 85 from last year as it uh, comes with the 120Hz panel along with Sony Motion Slow XR960. x 85 k is missing a few key motion handling features because it doesn't use the more advanced cognitive processor XR that I find in more top tier units. You have the option to use either the standard motion interpolation system or use the black frame insertion interpolation that is adding black frames in between individual frames and can potentially smooth out motion. Uh, BFI can be enabled by turning clearness to match the if you use the custom setting in the motion flow menu. Black frame insertion was able to improve overall motion as is always the case, but the TV had exactly the same image duplication issues I've seen uh, in some other Sony releases. As I had uh, I mentioned uh, uh, previously, this is not a problem visible all the time, but in particular scenes, uh, I can notice it. And keep in mind that in general, black frame insertion has also a negative effect on brightness due to the black frames that are inserted. Overall solid performance but not without a few issues that uh, were to be expected as the X85K does not change anything compared to the X85J. Also keep in mind that you cannot use both VRR and BFI so you have to choose which one you prefer the most. Even low budget uh, ones, uh, this TV nowadays offer extremely low input lag values making them excellent choices for gaming purposes. According to these measurements, uh, X85K measured an average of 16 millisecond input lag in both 100p and 4k resolutions at 60 hz with the use of game mode. At 120 hz, I measured 7 millisecond in both 100p and 4k resolutions, which is amazing and will result in a completely satisfying gaming experience. So that's it from now. If you like this video, please subscribe and press the bell icon for future notifications update. Thanks for watching. To change your